Well, hello and greetings from our peer advisors and mentors program, affectionately called PAM. I am Hope Walton, director of the PAM program, and I am so pleased to have this chance to welcome you as um, first year entering students who will be here in the fall, but also to, um, to let you know that we have some other panelists on this panel, uh, Ms. Laura Fittera, um, who is our administrative um, coordinator. She's going to support us in terms of fielding the questions um, towards the end. And um, we're so excited um, to have two of our students who have participated in the PAM program as mentors this past academic year. And so we have Abby Clark, um, who is a mentor, as well as Matthew Karen. And so you're gonna also get that chance to hear from them as well, because I'm sure you're gonna have some questions of our, our mentors. But um, I created um, the PAM program uh, about almost 31 years ago. And, um, and so PAM is getting ready to uh, actually officially be 30 years this coming fall. I, I actually designed the program during my first um, year here at the university. And so when I created this program, I designed it to, be a, to provide a collaborative learning experience that assists with retention through mentoring, leadership, and academic excellence. And so uh, this fall, as I said, we will be 30 years old and the program has had phenomenal success. And first of all, our first year mentees, they, uh, they excel academically here at the university. They um, integrate successfully at the university environment. And I think it's important for any of those of you who might be parents, um, we have for years helped students to successfully integrate into the university environment. And so now the buzzwords throughout higher education um, includes the terms of um, creating a sense of belonging. And so we might not have called it all of those years and decades a sense of belonging, but that's exactly what has happened because our students really connect to the environment. They connect to faculty, other students, staff persons. They excel academically, as I mentioned earlier, the first year mentees, to give you an example of this past academic year, last fall, they had a mean GPA of 3.5. And the mentees who participated in the program a year ago, uh, last spring semester, they had a mean GPA of 3.8. And so all of the research shows that when you have higher academic achievement in a peer mentoring program, that tends to let folks know that those students have had a sense of belonging. And so we're very excited about that. But also our mentees and mentor, mentors, <clears throat> excuse me, our leaders on campus. And um, this is very much recognized throughout the campus um, life here at the university. Also, I would say that PAM is one of the most diverse and inclusive student organizations on, on campus. We have everyone in the PAM program. Um, white, African-American, um, Asian, um, um, international students, Latinx, um, Hispanic students, but we also have some first generation um, students. We have multiracial, biracial students, and also demographically, we have rural students, students from the rural areas, urban areas and, and suburban areas. So a very inclusive and very diverse um, group of students. And finally, folks, I would certainly say that our students, our mentees, they are retained at the University of um, Richmond. In fact, we have exceeded the university's retention rates for 25 years out of a 29 year period. And of course, the University of Richmond has um, stellar um, retention rates. And you better believe that the president has um, noticed these retention rates within this um, PAM program. And so at this time, let me just take a few moments to touch on a few of the activities that um, we have engaged our first year mentees in um, this past academic year. And so, first of all, folks, I want to um, mention that our, we give our men, our first, our upper class mentors the chance to be as creative as they wish to be, but we do expect them to engage the first year mentees in a minimum of two activities per um, month. 
And so they have been very diligent in doing that. And some of those activities include a lot, just a myriad of things. But again, we give them the chance to be creative. And so, of course, um, some of our students might um, engage their mentees in academic um, events such as um, lecture, the lecture series. Some of them go off campus to go to movies. Uh, and of course, they, they love to um, take advantage of eating. Um, our mentees and mentors, they use a lot of our funding to engage their um, mentees into um, meals um, brought in because of the COVID. We had a number of meals that had to be brought in this time because of the restrictions that we had, particularly on um, during the first um, semester, first half of the um, academic year. But um, just to give you another example um, of how creative a, a mentor was some years back, and, I, and I'm sure the younger people, you all don't, you're not familiar with Dave Matthews. And I lived in Charlottesville for 16 years and I wasn't familiar with him. He's from Charlottesville until I had seen him on an HBO special. And that's when I fell in love with him and his band. So this mentor took his mentee to Charlottesville and they had dinner and then they went to the concert. And that mentee talked about that experience throughout his first year. He, he was just so excited to have been a part of that. And so those are just, that's just to give you a snapshot of some of the things that um, our students do one-on-one. -on -one. And of course, some of the men who, who really engage in exercise, often with times we'll see uh, mentees and mentors um, engaging in exercise at the same time in the, in the gym. And so in terms of group activities, um, and, and, and put this on your calendar, should you um, be accepted into this um, exceptional program, but we always have an induction um, ceremony for our, our mentees and our mentors. And this is designed to induct the first um, year mentees into the PAM family. But also we have other types of activities designed to really help the first year mentees and the upper class mentors to begin that, that whole process of, um, of bonding and connecting um, with one another. But we also had a, a, an exciting, um, <clears throat> excuse me, team building and leadership uh, event last fall that a lot of our mentees and mentors really appreciated. And believe it or not, we had a movie night. Um, and, and we every year when we meet with our newly selected mentors, each class is different. And so they're the ones who chime in to determine what activities we might do um, for, from year to year. And so you would think that at a movie night, well, you wouldn't get a chance to connect and talk. But this particular movie in which our students um, saw last fall, there was a lot of chatter, a lot of conversation, which was really exciting. And, and then of course we um, have an end of the sem semester blowout type thing. And so every last, the last day of classes on a Friday, we tend to take our students where we have in the past to skate nation and ice skating event. But this year, our students chose to do bowling, and they really, um, really appreciated um, having that particular opportunity. Um, and finally, in terms of the um, group activities, uh, we, we believe in, um, in, in giving back to the community. And so each year, we tend to engage our um, PAM participants in a community service project, one per semester. And the University of Richmond has a program called Trick or Treat Street that happens during Hall that Halloween weekend. <clears throat> and so every year we tend to have stations outdoors, sons and daughters of, um, of the employees, as well as people from the Richmond community. They come uh, and, and we have these stations set up and Pam would have a station. But because of the COVID this past um, fall semester, we ended up having a drive-in type of event, which was still pretty um, um, special in terms of providing, um, you know, people were dressed in costumes and we provided a lot of food and, and other types of prizes to these um, little kids. And then in the spring, we typically have a, a community service project with the Boys and Girls Club. And um, one other thing I want to share with you is that um, we, one of our mentees actually years ago, she um, created this concept of a family cluster. And so this young lady, she was in the program all four years. And typically we see a lot of students who stay in PAM for four years. They start off as a mentee and then they might become a leader and or a mentor, which is a leadership position for the rest of the time that they're at the university. 
but she established this concept and we, we ran with it. This year we had about 16 family clusters and we typically put 10 to 12 mentees and mentors in these clusters. And, it, and it's really designed to give um, students a chance to really connect and bond with one another on a smaller scale within the larger framework of the PAM family. And so we've been very, very successful with that. And so the family cluster leaders will engage um, their cluster members in a variety of activities. Sometimes they've gone to Browns Island for concerts. Other times they might engage them in a ropes course. They might go to the science museum. And of course they might engage them in meals. And so that happens a lot. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the leadership opportunities and then give you the chance to hear from our illustrious um, students. Um, we believe in, in leadership development, but also honing um, leadership skills of our mentees. And of course, our mentors are already um, leaders. But um, this year, because of the COVID restrictions, so many of the national leadership conferences that our students typically attend were canceled um, this year. But we're hoping that things will lighten up um, the upcoming academic year, but typically our students go to a lot of national leadership conferences pretty much on the East Coast. And so some popular ones is the um, International Student Leadership Conference that's, that's held in James, at James Madison University, but that was counseled. Well, we also have a number of students who love to go to the East Coast Asian student um, um, conference. And, and, and again, both of those conferences that I just mentioned, it's not just for international students. Um, it's not just for the Asian students. Students from all ethnic groups go to those particular leadership conferences. And so we have so many others that they choose from as well. And so we will certainly um, look forward to, uh, to engaging you in some of those leadership opportunities should you be um, selected to the PAM program. Now, our deadline is June 1. And invites have already been sent um, as of today um, to the to all of the accepted students um, to encourage you to uh, to apply for this um, exceptional program. And so at this time, let me take the time to um, for you to hear from our um, student panelists. Um, so Abby, and then Matthew, if you could um, share where you're from and um, your classification year and perhaps um, what drew you to the PAM programs, um, starting with um, Abby. Hi, so I'm Abby, I'll be a junior in Oops, okay, Abby? College kind of during the midst of COVID okay. and- Yeah, you, you're, you're fading out, Abby. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, one sec. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So like I was saying, my name is Abby. I'll be a junior um, this fall at Richmond and I'm from Rochester, New York. So what really drew me to the PAM program was I entered college kind of during the midst of COVID and I was just looking to meet new people and really find an upperclassman who could help me navigate college, especially during that difficult time. So I looked towards the PAM program and was greeted with a variety of not just my mentor, but amazing upperclassmen and people my own age who are able to help me kind of navigate school during an extremely difficult time. Mm -hmm. And um, Matthew? So my name is Matthew Karen. I will be a jun junior in the fall um, and I'm from Orlando, Florida. What, what drew me to the program, like in Abby's case, was just entering COVID during the pandemic and not only wanting to seek out a, a mentor with an upperclassman, but also to engage in that family cluster experience. I actually attended this same Zoom session two years ago. And so hearing about not only the mentor mentee relationship, but the opportunity to make connections with other freshmen and other upperclassmen so readily and so easily was really something that attracted me to the program. Thank you. So Matthew, why don't you take this uh, next question? How did you help your mentees um, um, in adjusting to um, UR? So 
as is the case with, I think, most, if not all mentees, we reach out to our mentees prior to the first day of classes. We reach out during the summer, we introduce ourselves, we give a little bit of background about ourselves, but then we also help them with the registration process in terms of courses. We don't say, take this teacher, don't take that teacher, but we say, here's kind of what the registration process looks like, and just giving general guidance and answering questions, all things related. Um, in terms of the first few weeks, I'd say it was really about making early contact um, and establishing a connection with your mentee face-to-face. -face. Um, I know that at least in the few, first few weeks, I grabbed lunch on campus with my mentee every week and just setting a time each week to grab lunch, connect, mm -hmm. ask, and really just check in and see how they're doing with their classes socially and just making sure that they are adjusting well to college life. Mm -hmm. and, and Matthew made an important point that um, our mentors, um, we, we ask them to really make sure that they connect with their mentees, particular, particularly in September and October, because research has shown time and time again that those months are critical in terms of whether or not a student uh, might leave an institution. And so it's very important that our mentors connect immediately and, and they have certainly done that. Okay, Abby, same question. Yeah, I would agree with Matthew. I'd say the early contact piece is extremely important. Um, a lot of first year students too, when they're coming in, don't really have someone to go to D Hall with all of the time. So just being able to provide that connection for them as well as introducing them to other um, first year students or other upperclassmen, I think is really important. I've met a lot of really great friends through someone introducing me. So I think that connection piece is super important. And just, again, putting a face to a name as soon as they get on campus, so they know if they have any issues during the first few weeks of school, they have a definite person they can reach out to confidently. Okay. And Abby, discuss um, your relationship with your mentor since you were a mentee in the program and then with your mentee and same thing for, for Matthew, because both of you all have been in the program for two years in a row. Yeah, so my mentor when I was a first year student did a really great job of introducing me to her friends, which was really neat because again, during COVID, it was pretty difficult to meet people. So she kind of took me under her wing and we grabbed lunch off campus and we ran errands together on numerous occasions. And she introduced me to her sweet mates and the people she was living with. And that was really special to me because I've always kind of looked up to people who are older than me in general. And then her just giving me even more people to look up to and reach out to um, if I had any questions. So then I knew that I kind of wanted to serve as that person for my mentee as a sophomore. And I did the same thing. I took her to lunch. I introduced her to my friends and she got to meet new people through me as well, which I think was super important and definitely valuable to her first year. Good deal. Matthew. Yeah, I'd say I had a pretty similar experience to Abby coming in during COVID, it was not the easiest meeting people. And so having that contact right from the beginning was something that I really valued. Um, I don't know if it's still this way, but I believe that when I was applying through the, to be a mentee, they asked a bunch of different questions about interests, yes. what I thought I might study. And so I was, I am someone who's pre-med and I got matched with an upperclassman who's also pre-med. And so in addition to having that social connection, having an upperclassman who had gone through the same process in terms of um, academic advising, choosing classes, um, getting involved in extracurriculars and volunteering, that was a contact person that I had for my academic track as well. And he was able to introduce me to other upperclassmen, mm -hmm. pre-health students. And in addition to having that social connection, having that academic connection. And so while I didn't have that same uh, connection with my mentee in terms of academic interests, I was able to bring my mentee to D Hall the first few weeks and introduce him to some of my friends. And really bolster the connections that he had on campus. Good deal, good deal. And, and actually when we match mentees with mentors, one of the first things we try to look at, um, and we do have that series of um, questions that we ask 
um, on that um, application, but we try to um, match people according to their um, major, their interests in particular um, disciplines. It doesn't always happen that way. It just depends from year to year because we have so many students who apply um, for this opportunity and we have a, a very small number of um, first year mentees who are actually accepted into the program. And we've tried to keep this program fairly small because we don't want to lose the intimacy because we really do indeed have, have a family as such of uh, mentees and mentors in the program. And when it, it, it grew tremendously about four or five years ago, uh, our mentors asked us to bring it back down to a smaller um, program because they felt that we had lost some of the intimacy. And so we listened to our mentees and our mentors as well. So could you discuss your leadership, how, how leadership opportunities have um, impacted your growth um, at the university? Sure, I can take that. Um, do you mean just through Pam or how Pam has kind of given me like the grounds to go into different leadership opportunities? Both, both. That That's okay. very um, good, um, Abby. <laughs> okay. So I'd say Pam kind of provided me with like the confidence and the people skills I needed to pursue other leadership positions. After joining Pam, I became a tour guide at the university. So that with paired really well with Pam because I was able to practice um, like public speaking, but then also practice relationship forming. And I feel like both of those um, disciplines are super important in leadership development. I also was able to, again, like gain the confidence to take um, different leadership positions in different clubs I'm a part of on campus. Um, I was able to get on campus jobs. So I think Pam as a whole really just gave me like the stepping stones that I needed to be confident in exploring different disciplines and different clubs and things perhaps maybe I didn't do in high school. Um, it also gave me the opportunity to become a communications chair for Pam and that really heightened um, my leadership skills and definitely put a lot of responsibility on myself, but taught me along a lot along the process, which I'm very thankful for. And Abby, she was a, an, uh, an exceptional um, ch um, chair. And so we were really glad that she took on this particular leadership position. But one of the things that we have done with Pam, and we've done this for many decades, we actually have our first year mentees as well as mentors fill out an activity form every semester. And it's just amazing, despite the fact that we dealt with COVID last fall and with the restrictions that our mentees had engaged in a number of activities. Some of them were involved in research. Some of them had uh, uh, attained um, um, honors, um, as well as our mentors. They certainly continued um, their leadership um, involvement as well. And then in the spring, it's really great to see moving from the fall semester to see how the mentees have even increased their involvement in different activities for the spring term. And we always ask them too, well, what things will you be involved in for the upcoming um, fall semester? And so that gives us a really good indication that students are, are really indeed um, connecting to the, um, involved, um, to the environment and they're engaging um, in different activities. And so at this, oh, Matthew, let's let you um, take a stab at that um, same um, question. Yeah, so I mean, everything that I have to say really echoes Abby's experiences. Um, having a leadership position within Pam really improved my communication skills, my ability to articulate, and really gave me the confidence to, the confidence and the connections to branch out and improve my um, leadership capabilities within other organizations where I already had leadership positions. Okay, thank you so much. So I think at this time, we'd like to um, open up this um, session to um, our students and perhaps parents um, who are here in the audience um, to ask whatever questions that you might have about the PAM program. So you can put some things in the chat room, um, if you will. Don't be quiet. <laughs> um, Laura, do you have anything? We don't have anything yet, but I'm um, waiting for something to come in in the Q&A. Okay. All righty. So um, go ahead and ask some questions, folks. Um, All right, we have our question. All right. Are students able to be in both the Bonner program and the PAM program? Good question. Um, we have certainly over the years have had students from both. 
Um, but it just depends now with the Bonner Scholars Program, you will be involved in roughly around um, 10 hours of community service uh, per week. And so, but still we've had a, a small cadre of students who have participated in that program as well as Pam. And so they're, they're able to balance their um, time effectively. So over the years, we've had both um, um, participants in both. Other questions, folks? I know we didn't do that great of a job to, um, <laughs> to explain everything about the PAM program. So um, let, us, let us hear from you. But um, another yeah. question. Okay. Uh, how many people are usually selected for this program? Roughly around 70 um, mentees um, in the program. This year, we had a total of about 187 mentees and mentors. And so, uh, you know, as I said earlier, our VP and and <clears throat> former president, they had, well, particularly our, our VP, he had asked us to grow it. And we have it grown it tremendously um, from about um, 40 to 50 um, mentees to now about 70. And so we want to keep it roughly around that, um, at that level. Okay. And I have a question for Matthew and Abby. Okay. What Great. happens after the first year? Do you keep in touch with your mentor or mentee? Um, and how about reapplying to the PAM program? That part might be more for hope. Good question. I can, oh, so you, oh, sorry, go ahead, Matthew. Yeah, so I think experiences vary. Um, um, what was I gonna say? Not all PAM matchmakings are made in heaven, but I think generally the PAM program does a really good job of making those pairings. I know I had a really good pairing with my mentor and so the connection between me and my mentee was also really good and so i can say that i keep in touch with both of them um i definitely keep in touch with my mentor um i'll definitely like i see him in the halls of the science building pretty often um, i've reached out to him about recommendations for classes um and so but i mean i've also heard of others who are just more they see each other in passing but overall i'd say you hear about mentors and mentees keeping in touch pretty often. Yeah, just to add on to that, um, my mentor was abroad in the fall, so I wasn't able to keep in touch with her as much as I had hoped in the fall, but we definitely were able to reconnect in the spring. And same thing, like when I see her, um, it may not be in a super, like in an organized setting, but I'm always gonna say hi and stop and talk to her. And I think that's the case for most mentee and mentor pairings, maybe the Connection isn't as strong um, as it was their first year, but definitely always a resource um, and friend for them on campus. Mm -hmm. And also I would certainly say to that other part of the question, over the almost 30 years of the PAM program, um, we have, have, have had a number of some hefty percentages of our first year mentees who become um, mentors. And research has shown this time and time again, when you have peer mentoring programs, there, it's almost like a self-advocacy type thing or self-development. Those um, types of, um, those mentees tend to become mentors. And, you know, as uh, Matthew said, every match is not made in heaven, but we have um, been very proud of um, the significant uh, matches that have occurred that are so positive. And so when we, when we learn that there is an issue between a mentee and a mentor, we try to step in pretty quickly because we do have those online evaluations that, that let us know what's going on between that mentee and the mentor. And sometimes we have to call some folks in or we'll write them to find out what's going on. There have been times in which we have moved uh, mentees to a different cluster. So we are very much aware of what's going on in that regard. But we have historically, had a, um, we have had as high as 56% of our first year mentees becoming uh, mentors in the PAM program. And this year we had a, a significant percentage of our um, first year mentees um, becoming uh, mentors in this upcoming fall. And they have taken on some um, leadership positions within the PAM family. Okay. Hope, can you talk a little more about the application process and what specifically you're looking for? Sure. It, it is a fairly lengthy um, application process, but we like to see whether or not, we want to see your interpersonal skills. You know, if you're an introverted person, we want to know that versus an extroverted. 
because we don't want to put um, two introverted um, individuals um, together. So we look at all of those types of things. We look at um, whether or not students are first gen, uh, um, where they're coming from, because we're not going to put all urban students, for example, in the PAM program. We're going to have a mixture of um, um, suburban, um, urban, and rural areas, as well as um, from other countries. And we, we have a significant, um, we could actually fill the um, PAM program with international students. They love PAM. And, you know, one time, um, several years ago, I asked a, a student from China, I said, well, what is it that um, makes you so interested in the PAM program? Because you have a buddy type program in the International Center. And, and, and this young lady said, PAM is an organized program, it's structured. Uh, we really connect with the other mentors through the family cluster and other mentees through that family cluster, but we also connect really nicely with our mentors. And so, you know, um, she made me feel good. I mean, to, to have heard that from an international student because we do have a number of other types of mentoring uh, programs, but um, Pam is considered to be one of the leaders in terms of mentoring though on um, the campus of UR. And so we ask a, lo a lot of different questions in terms of where you're from, you know, the interpersonal skills, what things have you done? And we, we ask a question too, what are you thinking about? What, what is making you um, nervous or, or are, are you nervous about entering into a new environment? And so it's always imp impressive to see the types of things and concerns that students are having as they're entering um, into our environment. Okay, and what are you looking for for accepted applicants? Well, we, we look for students who are going to appreciate um, the PAM program. You, you don't need to, 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 to apply if you're not going to participate. And we try to um, evaluate that kind of information through that application process. I mean, you can tell, sometimes parents have filled these um, applications out, unfortunately. Um, and then the student comes in the fall and, and you know, might not want to stay in the PAM program because he or she didn't really complete the application. So it's very important uh, that students take the time to complete the applications to indicate your interest in being connected with an upper-class student who can help you make a smooth transition into our university environment. Okay, and can you talk a bit about the difference between the PAM program and the Richmond Endeavor program? Okay, well, the Richmond Endeavor um, program has a faculty component um, with that, um, um, and they, are, they take classes um, with the faculty. Um, they engage in different activities. Some of the um, Endeavor um, faculty might take them on trips um, to other countries sometimes. Um, to this year, um, um, they went to some other places within the United States. And so it's a big difference. Um, PAM is a program that pairs you with upper class students. And so there's the, the major difference um, there. But the Endeavor program, though, is fairly new. And, and as I said earlier, PAM is almost 30 years old. So it's, it's, a, it's a major difference between those two programs. But both of them do a fabulous job in terms of helping students to uh, be retained, um, who come back as second year students who graduate. Just to add on, um, in my freshman year, I was a mentee within peer advisors and mentors, and I participated in Richmond Endeavor. And I'd say that they were both great experiences, very formative experiences. If you're considering Endeavor, I would highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. Definitely take a look at the courses because I, I would not recommend signing up for Endeavor if there isn't a course you like. But if this is something that you're thinking about, I'd highly recommend it. Both programs are very different. like. Hope said, Pam is much more social slash pairing with an upperclassman with a community service component, whereas Endeavor is a, an academic living learning program, but both are great. But the Pam program also focuses on academics and, and that's right. one of the things that we do promote and um, we've been successful in terms of not only our mentees um, um, excelling um, academically at the university, but our mentors Continue, mm -hmm. continue to excel um, academically. 
And so there are there are opportunities for you to to get involved in a number of, of activities when you come on campus. But I've always recommended to students to not overextend yourselves um, because that can happen very easily, uh, particularly the first semester. You know, maybe think about joining um, no more than a couple of um, activities just so that you can get acclimated to the environment. Some of you are going to be, well, you're going to be dealing with new faculty that you are not familiar with. Uh, all of them are different, but they, all of them do have office hours that will allow you to further connect with them in a personal so, and social as well as an academic um, way. And so it's a lot of different stressors that happen and that occur with any first year students coming to any particular institution. And so I think it's very important that that you find your, your niche in a sense of who you're going to have as friends, who you're going to connect. And we certainly encourage students to connect with their faculty, as well as uh, staff persons on campus, as well as other students outside of the PAM program. All right, and just one more question. Can you repeat the community service details? Okay. Well, um, last year, normally in the fall is when we have the trick or treat street. And I would say that we've been involved in that community, that university wide community service um, activity for close to 20 years. And um, this year we had to do it a little bit differently because of the COVID. Uh, it was a drive in type thing. So parents and students lined up and came through the campus and picked up um, gifts, um, food types of items. And, um, you know, um, it just, it was really different from previous years when you were all outdoors. Sometimes it's been held on the West Hampton Green and you have stations. And so all these different student organizations, they do a different thing. We have had, um, uh, um, what's that thing um, in terms of the, um, passing the pumpkin? That's been one of our things that we have had before. And we've had other types of um, activities that we give a lot of um, uh, food um, items, uh, for the, um, the young students, take pictures. And so they have all types of activities at these different um, uh, um, stations. They have animals uh, sometimes. Um, and so it varies from, from year to year. But um, the, um, uh, the sororities and fraternities, they basically are, are from, um, they put on this um, particular activity per year. Now, in the past, um, we have done for the second semester, the spring term, we have typically invited um, six to 12 year olds who are, are part of the Boys and Girls Club. Um, um, and so they have different clubs throughout the Richmond um, area. And so they typically come here on campus, they bus them on campus. They arrive around five o'clock in the afternoon. They stay a couple of hours. And um, over the years, our um, chairs, as well as um, mentees, will work with the mentors and they plan a program. Sometimes it's based on a theme. Like for example, one year we had heart health. Um, and so therefore all the different stations, you had um, science experiments at one station, you might've had karaoke, you might've had um, um, uh, that rope type of thing, tug of war, uh, but uh, lots of other fun types of activities. And so the parents are prop, the students when they leave, they're probably bouncing off the walls because they have had plenty of cake and pizza, plenty of carbs. Uh, and, and so they have such a good time. And we, we also give them, if we have loads of pizzas and what have you left over, uh, they, um, we give that um, to, the, to those students as they're leaving. But it really, you, it, it's just so special to see these young kids connecting with UR students. And um, it's a wonderful, it's a really a, a wonderful recruitment um, tool. I am a former admissions officer. And so I look at that. I mean, when you see a young six-year-old coming to a campus like a beautiful campus like you are, they might say, you know, I think I want to go to that school uh, maybe six years later or whatever, 10 years later or what have you. And so it's almost like a recruitment tool, but it's not built that way. Trust me, it is a community service um, project in which we're, we're trying to give back to the community to do something special for these young kids. And so it's always a lot of fun when we sponsor that. But we can't, we had to cancel that this year because the Boys and Girls Clubs struggled with transportation and other types of issues because of COVID. 
And so we weren't able to do that this year. The first time in over, uh, I would say about 25 years that we have not been able to do that. And last year, because of COVID, we ended up doing um, uh, a video. We prepared, our students prepared a video um, of, um, for the students to, to look at later on that day. Other questions, um, Laura? No, that's it for the Q&A, unless anybody wants to put something in right now. Okay, well, we'll give them a, a few more minutes. Um, and so if you, if you have any questions, I certainly um, want to urge you to, to, to send us a note. Uh, um, but I hope that we have given you a lot of information. Sure, Abby. I was just going to say, I can put my email in the chat also. So if anyone thinks of any questions, they want to reach out to me, they can do that also. Thank you. Yeah. Same with me as well. That would be great um, because I'm sure students might have additional questions that they had not thought of. Yes. And if you all reply to the email that you received to join this Zoom, that will come back to us and we will get back to you from that email too. Mm -hmm. So other questions? No more questions yet. Okay, well, you've, you've asked some good questions. And so again, uh, we certainly look forward to um, um, reviewing your applications. Um, and certainly we hope that um, many of you will um, be a part of the PAM family this coming fall semester. And even if you don't, uh, um, if you're not accepted, uh, please know that we certainly want you to seriously consider um, applying as a mentor. So many of the students who weren't accepted into the PAM program over the years, they have ended up becoming wonderful mentors in, in PAM. And the thing that's interesting too, is, um, as Matthew said, um, sometimes all of the matches are not made in heaven. Even when a mentee has a mentor that wasn't very, you know, really had, had them participating, and, or, or engaging them in a number of activities. We have had a number of mentees saying, well, I wanna be a mentor because I know what it takes to be a good mentor um, because of the experience I had. And so sometimes that happens, it's very rare, but still, you know, as I said, when you are dealing with that many people and that many applications, and again, our number one matching thing, we really try to look at uh, the majors, the interest in the different majors, but sometimes we don't always have, like say for example, if we had um, 20 people who were interested in chemistry, but we only had about 10 mentors who were in, um, who were chemistry majors, we might um, put those um, individuals with another science. It could be physics, it could be a pre-med student, uh, that sort of thing. So we, we try our best, but um, um, and then we also ask students, to, do you prefer to have um, uh, a, a, you know, a mentor, a male mentor or a female um, a mentor? And so sometimes um, um, students want to have, you know, they have a particular um, interest uh, um, in the gender. And so we look at that as well. Okay, no more questions, huh, Laura? One more question. Okay. Uh, for Abby and Matthew, what has been your favorite event hosted by Pam? Good question. I can go first. My favorite event this year was probably the end of the year ceremony where we had the rolled ice cream and the make your own pasta. That was super fun. The food was really great. And it was a great last opportunity to gather with everyone before the end of the year and before finals um, started. So that was probably my favorite event. For me, I mean, it was probably the bowling. Bowling was a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. And, and that's a, that was a good question, too, because I, I failed to talk about um, um, every year in April, we have an end of the year um, 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 dinner, social. And so this year, we, it really was really nice um, because in the past, we really hadn't been able to see a lot of the students in person in some, in some instances. Um, and so this gave our students, mentees and mentors, a chance to have a really nice dinner. And we had one of those um, stations in which they actually had, um, it was a, a kind of like a marble um, slab 
where it was frozen in a sense and they made the ice cream, um, you know, if it was a Sunday or whatever and all the things that you might wanna put on that ice cream, but we also had a pasta station and, um, and a buffet in which you could get some other different types of um, foods. And we always pay attention when students have different dietary um, needs. So we make sure we have vegan and vegetarian types of dishes um, and what have you. And so we've done that for years. And so we always ask you too, uh, if, there are, if you have allergies, that sort of thing. But this really was a special dinner. And also at the, um, at the dinner every year, we have a, um, a, a person who, um, the mentor of the year awards, we give that out. And, but we also have a mentee of the year award. And so the mentors, the mentees actually um, complete a short, um, short answer type questionnaire, um, um, giving us reasons as to why their mentor should be chosen as um, mentor of the year. And the same thing um, in which mentors do that for the mentees. And we have a, a, a committee of, um, of students who, um, who are non-PAM affiliated who um, make those decisions as to who gets the um, award. And we've come up with a rating scale and, and that sort of thing. And so that's always special too. And I would say for the last uh, six to seven years, we have also included a um, family cluster uh, um, award. Um, those go to um, clusters who really were in, engaged in a lot of different cluster events, but also they got many of their participants within that cluster to, uh, to go on different cluster events. And so that's been a lot of fun. We have had um, students in the past who have been a part of the PAM program. They, they know that we have this family cluster award every year. And so they start off like in early in September um, planning and they, and they plan actually during the summer and also they get together to plan at the induction ceremony. But um, some of the cluster members and the leaders, they will plan and um, implement uh, a family cluster event early in September. And so that begins that whole process of which they, because we only expect them to do a couple of family cluster activities per um, semester. In fact, our, our mentors asked us to increase it to two because we used to only have one family cluster activity that was required of the clusters. And so several years ago, um, our mentors, um, they asked us to, um, to extend that to two. And again, as I said, we listen to our students. We listen to our mentees and mentors um, if they have concerns or suggestions and what have you. And that certainly helps to um, strengthen um, um, the engagement, uh, the interactions uh, among the mentees and mentors. And Pam, I must say, we are one of the organizations that have a strong number of um, leaders. We have about 45 um, leadership positions within the PAM program alone. You know, we have communication chairs, social chairs, academic chairs, so many different types of um, leadership positions um, that our mentors um, take advantage of. And so that's a, and, 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 and over the years too, we have had more and more um, non uh, mentors um, who have actually applied to become PAM mentors. Um, and, and that application process is normally in January of each year because they hear about all the different leadership opportunities that they can have um, within the PAM program. Any other questions? Nothing else in the chat. All righty. Well, we look forward and we certainly hope that you will apply. And we think that this um, program is an exceptional um, one. And, uh, and I think when you're, when you're entering into a university environment, you wanna be able to connect from the very beginning you want to be able to identify the faculty, the staff, and other students and, and form, form those important relationships. And so even if you're not in the PAM program, we certainly encourage you to do that because that's going to may help, help you have a richer experience. And that first semester is critical. And I would suggest, too, while I'm thinking about it, you know, take some classes that you like or some or explore some courses that you never had when you were in high school. But the first semester, don't go over, you know, um, overboard with choosing all challenging courses in which you, uh, you know, because you want to have a good um, semester in which you have a decent and strong uh, GPA. 
And so take some fun classes along with, I mean, if you're gonna take, if you're thinking pre-med and you start taking two science courses at first semester, or if you're thinking about business and you're taking calculus and microecon, but you wanna pair those courses with something that you are going to enjoy. And I think you're gonna find that that's going to um, strengthen and enhance uh, your experiences at the university coming in for that first semester. And then the second semester, you will have acclimated, hopefully, to the university environment. And so the second year, second semester, you might take some different types of courses, but you'll have a better feel for whether or not you are a morning person and whether or not you're going to take um, all of your... Now, for me, I was a morning person, so I took my classes at eight o'clock. A lot of students do not want eight o'clock classes, okay? But I, will, I wanted to take them because I'm not an afternoon person. This is not my great time of day, you know, um, in terms of my brain cell synapting and, and what have you. Um, my, my battery tends to go down in the late afternoon. And I knew that about myself when I was at, um, um, at this university. And so I'm a morning person. So I always prefer taking um, the morning classes so that I didn't have to take so many in the afternoon. And so you all, you'll get a chance to um, get a feel for that as well particularly the, um, this, by the second semester of your um, first year at the university. And so again, we look forward to, um, to seeing you in the fall and, um, and we hope that you'll come by um, to, to, and stop by to see us. And we always participate in the family weekend in which students um, come to our open house. And so we certainly want to encourage some of our parents um, to come and, um, and, and connect with us. But again, we will, if your if you're, if you're children, if for the parents, if your children are in our program, we promise to, um, to care for your um, children, to help them make those important connections, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And we have one more question. Okay. And probably all of you can speak to this. How would you estimate the time commitment? Well, it's, it's what you put into the program. We're only talking about two activities per month. And you can do some exciting things on campus if you don't have the time to go off campus. You know, as I said earlier, sometimes students exercise once or twice or three times a week, or even if your schedules are busy, you have to eat. So plan some activities around um, going to D Hall or other types of eateries on campus um, if your time is really um, um, stretched. And so it really does not take a lot of your time that's gonna take you away from your academics in a sense, because you have to strike that balance, folks. It's not about, and I think the parents would appreciate this too. Yes, they want you to excel academically, but they want you to strike a healthy balance. And so a lot of times students will just get so focused and, and, and doing all of the academic types of things, and they don't take care of themselves mentally, um, socially, and personally. And that's just as important too. Um, students should be exercising um, um, th throughout the week and engaging in other types of activities. And it just helps you to have a much healthier um, experience at any institution. And so I'll let my um, the panelists um, weigh in on that. I would agree. Um, I'd say it could be as little from like four or five hours a semester because you do only need to do a couple activities or it can be anything from a couple hours to a week. It really just depends on what you're looking to get out of the PAM program. If you're looking to form a really strong relationship with your cluster family, as well as your mentor, it's going to involve putting some more time in. But again, understandably, everyone's really busy. Um, so you may not have time to put as much commitment as you would have hoped. But like Hope was saying, you do need to eat. So a great time to connect with your um, mentee and your cluster families are just getting food on campus or even just like taking a study break, going for a walk around the lake, something like that. So definitely easy enough to um, put in time to the program. And also we're flexible. We give you the opportunity. I mean, when you know that we're going to have a, a, a major event, um, Pam sponsored event, um, we are going to ask you whether or not you can make this. And sometimes students might have um, a conflict, they're in classes or in a lab. And so all we do is ask the students to make sure that they um, make us aware of that because we do spend our monies um, to plan these different activities for you. And so um, 
over the years, um, I've been a lot more flexible. I think in the early, uh, I guess the first few years, I might have been more restrictive in terms of, um, you know, really mandating that students come to all of the different activities. But over the years, I've um, certainly become a lot more flexible in that regard because there are so many things that uh, might be obstacles. You might have to go to a wedding um, for the weekend if, if we're having a function on a Friday, for example. Um, or, or you might have a sick um, um, relative. It's just so many different um, reasons that might come up in which you might have a conflict. And so we're just asking that you be honest with us and let us know in enough time so that we can plan accordingly in terms of how many meals we might order or other types that we, other things that we might have to order for that particular event. So we're very flexible in that regard. And so it really does not take a whole lot of your time, especially if you want to get the goodies of being able to um, connect readily um, to uh, a family of uh, mentees and mentors that's gonna help um, enrich your experiences at the university. And Matthew, I'm sure you have something to say about that. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, what you guys said covers pretty much, it covers it well. Um, particularly what you get into, what you put into it is what you get out of it. I mean, with every experience at Richmond, it's the experiences are here. It's really what you make of them. And Pam is no exception. If, uh, I mean, pe people get busy very quickly. And so if you're worried about a time commitment, it's some, it can be something as simple as you grab lunch every two weeks and then you have the two family cluster events each semester and that can be the extent of your experience with Pam but as I've seen with my experiences and with the experiences of others with the Pam matchings being done so well you really do form friendships and it isn't see, uh, it isn't seen as a time commitment it's seen as something that you get to do you get to grab lunch with your mentors you get to go to the family cluster event and it's something that really turns into a fun experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Laura, do we have any more? See something in the chat. No, nothing else. Oh, okay. Well, folks, um, we're gonna end this um, webinar. And again, we uh, appreciate your time. And we certainly hope that, um, we certainly look forward to um, connecting with you um, in the fall. Take care. All righty, bye.